Can you please help us read our title today? Christian, what are we studying today? Perfect. Let me remind you guys what standard form is. The quadratic functions in standard form. Standard form is when you have y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay. So that's in standard form. It's not an HK form. An HK form is when you can identify your vertex very easily. In this case, not so much. Number one, can you help me read the steps to graph in standard form? Hannah, can you help me read number one, please? Identify the parent function. Yeah, identify the parent function. Guys, what's the parent function for any or all quadratic functions? y equals not an absolute value what is it what's a parent function can't have negative in the parent parent has to be positive what well, we have to be happy what to be simple what is the parent function y equals any x squared guys it just you got to strip all the transformation yeah. from all parents, okay? All right. Then it says make a table for your parent function. If you remember, we had a table, x and y coordinate, and I gave you five inputs. What were the five inputs? Negative two, negative one, zero, one and two. Then you were supposed to find all five outputs for the parent. What are the five outputs again? Four, one, zero, one, and four. Do you guys remember this? Yeah. Now, because this is not in HK form, you do not know the vertex right away. You have to find it. To find the vertex, again, the vertex is <coughs> H comma K, bless you. Okay. Um, you have to find it algebraically. The X coordinate of the vertex, X coordinate. of vertex. Would you agree the x coordinate of the vertex is in this case is h? Okay? It's h. And in algebra 1, anybody remember how to find the x coordinate of the vertex? In algebra 1, it's negative. In algebra 1, we actually use x equals it was negative b all over all over what? Huh? How many A? 2A. You're right. Okay. So that's how we find the X coordinate of the vertex. Now, what? how do we find the Y coordinate of the vertex once we have an X coordinate of the vertex? How do we find the Y coordinate of the vertex once we have the X coordinate? How do we find Y? In any equation or functions, how do you find Y if you know X? Plug it in. Yes, it's that simple. Plug it in. Guys, to find y, you plug it. Yep, find y. Plug in x. Okay, find y. Plug in x. So that's why the formula is only given to you in x equals because you should know how to find y if we have x. We, just like always, will identify your a, h, and k because those will give you the transformations. Then we're gonna try to list your transformation, okay? From the transformation, we will make new values. We're gonna plot the points, and then we're gonna fill out the table. So, none of that is new except the vertex formula. So again, you should know how to use x equals negative b all over 2a if h and k are not found right away. All right, let's refresh our memory. If a is negative, what's the transformation? What is it? Oh, yep, over x reflection. Reflection over the x-axis. Over x-axis, okay? If your a value, an absolute value of that is like a half or a third or five sevenths, what type of transformation is that? Vertical. Vertical. 
compression, you're right. Vertical compression factor of A, whatever that A is. If A happened to be 9 tenth, then there's a vertical compression of 9 tenth. If A is bigger than 1, like 9, 100, 4, it's vertical stretch factor of A, whatever that A value is. Okay. Now, H value goes which direction? H goes which direction? Right or left. If H is positive, okay, if H is positive, you go right. If H is negative, you go left. K goes which direction? Up and down. If K is positive, you go up. If K is negative, you go down. Okay. So again, these are not new, hence we said refresher. All right, here we go. And we're going to do example one two ways, and then you can pick later. Okay. Example one to three, find the vertex, list the transformations from your parent function, graph them, and then fill out all the characteristics, including the transformations. Y equals negative x squared plus 4x plus 5. Is it possible for us to find an A value right now? What's your A value? Negative 1. So even if we don't need, if we don't know H and K, we should know A. Now we are going to start with the parent function. What's your parent function again? Y equals x squared. All right, go ahead and quickly get the five outputs. Can you give me, Dollar, give me your five outputs for the parents, please? Um, four, one, zero, Good. Okay. Now we are going, again, I'm going to show you how to do this two ways. The first way is exactly what the step says. We are going to try to find the vertex. The vertex, which is h comma. Okay. How do, how do we find the x coordinate of the vertex? What formula are we going to use? Yeah. X coordinate of the vertex is going to be negative B divided by 2 times A. Do we know an A, B, and C for this? What's your A, B, and C? A is negative 1. What's your B? B is 4. What's your C? Negative 5. Here's your B. Here's your C. Okay. All right. Let's start. What's B again? <laughs> negative 4 divided by B is 4, so negative B would be negative 4. 2 times negative 1, which will give us negative 4 divided by negative 2, which is 2. Okay, so we have a 2. Can I fill that in for H? Yep. How do we get K, which is the Y coordinate of the vertex? Plug it in, okay? So K is the Y coordinate of the vertex, which we just plug it in. Y is the same as K, by the way. All right, negative, quantity. Quantity what? Two square in there, very good, plus four times two, and then add five. What's two square? Four, four times negative one in the front? Negative four. 4 times 2 is 8 plus 5. Go ahead and work that out. Give me the output, please. What's the output? Is it 9? Okay. Remember, that's the vertex. Okay. Again, we're going to work this out two ways. This is the first way. So the vertex is right away, we can plot in 2 comma 9, okay? So, I'm sorry, that's a minus 5 at the end, isn't it? Sorry, minus 5 at the end. You see how I wrote plus 5? Oh, boy. Sorry, sorry, that was my fault. Oh, boy, is right. All right, minus 5. All right, so instead of 9, 
negative 1. Thank you. All right, so that's negative 1. So right away, can I plot the vertex? Yeah, yeah let's plot it. 2 comma negative 1. Let's go. 2, negative 1 is right here. Okay. If A is a negative value, guys, do we know the position that it opens? How is it open? Opening upward or downward? downward. Yeah, so we know right now it opens downward. Right? We just need a few more dots. Okay. Even so, think about this. We know H and K already. Can I use those for our transformation table? Yeah. Okay. The A value, how will we be using it in a transformation table? A value, where does it go on a transformation table? Oh, this is the same way we've done it before. Multiply to the? Y. So we got negative 1, which is A times Y. Now we're going to go over here and write the transformation. Since A is negative 1, what kind of transformation is that? Reflect over X axis. We are going to do this two ways to show that either way you're going to get the same exact graph. H value, positive or negative? That means you're going where? To the right. Mm -hmm. Right. How many units? Two units. K is what? Negative one. That means you're going where? Yep. Down one unit. Okay. So, all right. So, H. Where do we use that on? X table or Y table? X. We're going right. Do we add it to x or subtract x? Add. K is negative 1. Do we add it to y or subtract it from y? Subtract y because we're moving down, right? I'm going to give you a minute head start. Take your x values. Transform that for me. Once you're done transforming your x's, can you please take your y value from the parent and transform the y for that one? Once you have all of your new transform values, can you share it before you plot? Share it in your team. Okay. Grace, can you give me the transform inputs, all five of them, Grace? Zero, one, two, three, and four. Good. Five outputs. Can you, Kyler, give me our new five outputs? Okay. Let's plot. Should we already have the vertex on there? Yeah. Look at that. Okay, zero, we are going to go to negative five. One, we're going to go to negative two. What? The vertex already on there? Whoa. Okay. Vertex, table, here we go. Alan, tell us what to write on our table vertex. Good job. Axis of symmetry. Brian, tell us what to write on the axis of symmetry. Perfect. X intercept. Alyssa? X intercept? Not applicable? Okay. Y intercept? Chris? Zero comma negative five. Domain? Kenzie? Very good. 
If you choose to write interval notation is negative infinity to infinity, range, Olivia, y is less than or equal to negative 1. Interval notation will go from negative infinity to negative 1 bracket because it's inclusive. Increasing, Hannah, increasing interval, hun, from where to where? Increasing interval, what should we write? No, we have an increasing. Do you want to consult your team first? You're close. Negative infinity to what class? Yeah, I remember. This is the axis of symmetry. Would you guys agree? A O S. Okay. Axis of symmetry is also the location of your vertex. Your vertex is either the highest or the lowest. Would you agree? This half right here on the left side is an increasing half. So that means you're starting somewhere over here. If you can't pinpoint somewhere over here, we will start at what? Infinity. Negative infinity. And then we go to, what's our x location again? 2. So negative infinity to 2. Decreasing. Trevor, decreasing interval. 2 to infinity. Perfect. Rate of change. Mariana. Very good. Okay. 1 to 1 or no? Riley, what do we write in 1 to 1? No, not an NA. Oh, no, no. no, good. All right. Do we have a minimum value or maximum value, Chizuki? Huh? Minimum value or maximum value? Do we have a minimum value for our curve or maximum value for this particular parabola? Maximum. So on minimum, we're in right none applicable. Maximum value is what, Adam? Uh, 2 comma negative 1. No, not an, I don't want an order pair. Maximum value is? Uh, negative, one. negative 1. You're right. And then if it says where is it at, we can write at x equals to 2. Okay. So that's method number 1. Method number 1. How do we find h and k again? Using x equals negative b over 2x. Now method number 2. Um, this one, I don't know if you like it better or not, but we're going to put it right here in the bottom. Okay. Shh. Method number two, again, uh, I'm going to copy down the question really quickly. Y equals negative x squared plus 4x minus 5. Okay. Method number two does not, again, shh. It doesn't change your a, h, and k at all. It's just a different way to get those, okay? A value would still be the same. So method one and two are just two different ways to obtain your h and k value. Method number two will ask you to complete the square, okay? Now before, when we completed the square, because we needed to solve, would you guys agree that we move the constant to the other side? Okay, but because the other side is not a zero, we don't move it. So, method number two, right now we're just going to scoot the constant a little bit to the right side if we have more space. Okay, so if we move it slightly to the right, we now have these two things right here, which we will factor out. Remember, when completing the square, can we have anything in front of the x squared except a 1? No. So what should we factor this out? Negative 1. We will factor out a negative 1. If we factor out a negative 1 from x squared, what's left? x uh huh. If we factor out a negative 1 from 4x, what's left? Negative 4x. Okay. We will add a blank space in here. Okay. All right. How do we do the side work again? Half of negative 4, which is what? Negative 2, and then we square it. What's negative 2 square? 4. We will add a 4. Ah, but 
But guys, we can't just go in and add a 4 to our original equation. That's changing the values. That's not okay. You may go in and add a 0. A 0 would never ever change your equation, would it? No. So how would we, how would we add a 0? What would we need to do now to make sure that we're not changing this original equation? If we added a 4, what must we do to ensure that it's really going to be a 0? Subtracted a? Oh man, you're so good. Would you agree that if I added a 4, I must immediately subtract it a 4? Because those are now what? We pretty much added a what? A 0. But class, just like earlier when we said he completely square, this 4 is really being multiplied to what? A negative 1. So this negative 4 over here needs to also multiply to negative 1. Okay. <coughs> So now, we get down to this. What are the factors? X. Uh-huh. What else? Plus or minus? minus? Minus 2. Okay, over here, it's negative 5 plus a 4, which is really what? What? Isn't that a negative 1 class? So let's look at this equation. If I said identify your A, what's your A? Identify your H, what's your H? Not negative, it's just what? Positive 2. Identify your K, what's your K? Isn't it the same thing as the other method? So, you just learn a second method. You decide what you 